Hello, Zero K fans, and welcome to Not Only the Dawn. I'm your host, Dominic, or Shadow Fury, whichever you prefer. And we are starting out with a 2v2 on Onyx Cauldron, because, yes, sometimes I do team games. So we have Jasper and Fiscuffs in the bottom right corner, Spiders and Hovers, respectively, or Hovers and Spiders, respectively. And the other side, we have people without names. Okay, what the heck? We have Thomas on Spiders and MV on Cloakbots. Not sure why we aren't seeing the names on them, but... I guess that's a bug with the name tags. Strange. Okay, I guess there's a weird bug with the name tags not showing on what would be considered opponents. Anyway, back to the game. So, yeah, spiders everywhere! And no amphibots. Hovers, yes. We do have maces actually coming out from Jasper, which, no surprise there, because, of course, that's what you do with hovers, really. Got a couple maces, and Honest Culture, of course, you can just go across the lake over here in the center, and that really simplifies things. So you get that set up, get the lake, cross the lake, go over to the opponents, and just wreck shop. On the other hand, it's not like that's the only riot unit in the game, so it'll be interesting to see how that pans out, but yeah, it looks like overall no one's really bothering a lot with early raiding. I mean, we have an early glaive just mainly being used as a way of getting rid of fleas, but otherwise, no, everyone's basically going for early riots. Early weaver, early redback, only one making fleas is fisticuffs, as they're just trying to get all the scouting they can. And, of course, Sparrow's coming in for MV, so it's not like scouting is entirely exclusively in the purview of the Southeast team, but hey, they have their fleas everywhere. They know exactly what's going on. Which is what you want. Though, surprisingly, fist neither Fisticuffs... No, sorry, just not Fisticuffs. Jasper actually has built some quills. Fisticuffs has not built weavers, even though they could really use them to put, you know, wind generators and such on top of this hill. But no, we aren't seeing that at all, surprisingly enough. Anyway, starting out though, we do have a very nice little bit of harassment from Fisticuffs, getting rid of this Weaver with no real cost. The Fleas should be able to come in here, take out the Weaver, and run off. I mean, the, the Ronin can't stop them. The Reavers really don't have much of a chance to stop them either. So yeah, this is actually really effective. A couple of the Ronin are being torn apart by the Fleas as well, and nothing is destroying them. The only thing killing them is the death explosions of the Ronin. Again, this is why you kind of want to use Fight Move with Fleas if you can help it. But still, that was remarkably valuable. Like, Fisticuffs coming in getting... Well, already getting a huge amount of attrition. I mean, 800 metal worth of attrition for basically free. I mean, fleas are worth about 20 metal each. So it's not really too much of a cost. And it also does open things up a little bit for the mace. Unfortunately for the mace, it was damaged along the way. So Jasper's not going to be able to do too much damage. Not get rid of Thomas's commander. Who apparently has acquired a name. Good. Really not sure what was going on there. At any rate, Southeast team definitely has gone a very early lead in terms of territory. Overall, though, it's more than they just have an early lead in terms of scouting. A lot of fleas all over the place, but not a lot of units building up expansions. We don't see any weavers coming out from Fisticuffs. We see some quills being built out by, by Jasper, but that's about it. And I'm really surprised we aren't seeing more constructors, because really, Jasper's con commander is the only th reason why the Southeast military advantage, the Southeast positioning advantage, is turning into a territory advantage, and currently losing a tarantula as well for free. Bit of a shame that goes so out of position was not retreated. Okay, that's the thing, is that we see Fisticuffs has been focusing largely on building up a lot of the heavier units, or possibly later game units, like, you know, the Tarantula, which would have helped get rid of the Sparrow, but, or at the very least, stop the Sparrow from scouting in this area. However, it's kind of hard to really stop that if you don't have more than one Tarantula, and that's all you have, and it dies. The dying being the really big problem, the, you, units that don't exist have a much harder time actually doing damage. It's just one of those facts of life you have to get used to, is that units have to be in the world to actually interact with it. All joking aside though, the currently setup for the Northwest team is actually surprisingly even. Despite early losses in territory and early losses in military, They've been constructing a lot more effectively. They've had a lot more constructors. They've had their commanders expanding a lot more effectively. Overall, the Northwest team has been taking territory, while the Southeast team has simply been threatening it. And that has been giving the Northwest team a bit of an advantage here, and while the Southeast team is catching up and getting some metal extractors here and there, the Southeast team had a lot of time to build up when they had the fleas first come in and start tearing everything apart to just go in and take all these metal extractors build it defenses, make sure everything was in place, and that wasn't done. 
So at this point, there's a pretty even stalemate going between the two teams, despite early aggression from the Southeast team. And the Northwest team is gradually just getting a little bit of overdrive here and there, a little bit of reclaim here and there, and bringing up their overall economy potential simply by having just that little bit of extra attention to it. While on the other hand, the Southeast team barely has enough energy to keep their production going, like, wouldn't be able to use reclaim at this energy difference. If they got 10 metal per second reclaim, they'd be putting it in storage. And they don't really have a whole lot of overdrive either. It's not terrible, but it's clear that's not the focus either. Regardless, the Southeast team is still holding on in this game. Like, they still have a reasonably good position, but that may not last. The Ronin coming into the north side of the map, able to take out the Quill, able to take out the Lotus without any real losses. I mean, that's what, a dozen Ronin coming in here? Only losing one of their, or no, two of their number, but still opens things up. If they kept going, they actually would be able to take out quite a lot here. But clearly that's not the focus, and that is going to be a bit of an issue going forward, just because the Southeast team, they can just rebuild here. There's not a whole lot threatening them, especially as the Mace is coming here. Ooh, Lance getting rid of one of the commanders, Thomas's commander, opening up the center quite a bit. And of course, this center lake, that is under the control of the Southeast team, and that's what I mean. The Northwest team, they had a bit of a chance to provide a distraction by going in the back lines and tearing apart these expansions, and they didn't take advantage of that. Now, the Ronin can still do a lot against these Maces, but the Maces can just go right in the center of the lake and not worry about the Ronin in the slightest. Which is exactly what they're doing. Same time, Widow going into the north side, which helps get rid of this crab. Or at least helps mess around the crab a little bit. It's mostly just makes the crab not do anything. Still good use of fleas coming in around the other side to make sure that the Widow isn't going to be the most effective thing in the world. Crab! should be able to survive with about 80% HP left. Especially if the fleas are coming in and helping out. And... Ooh, maybe not. Those red backs are doing quite a number on it. That flea... That crab goes down. That is going to mean the rest of this expansion is basically open. The, the stinger isn't going to help too much against all the units coming in here. Especially with... Well, not so much the recluses, but if backup fleas come in, that's going to help. So this crab was really a big defensive tool, and it is not going to be able to do anything. Redback coming in to try to save the day, and should manage to, actually. Just barely. Redback Mace able to save that crab. And with the quill right there, some repairs can happen immediately. So at the very least, that crab is still on the map, but at the same time, we see exactly what I was kind of hoping to see coming out from MV with all these Ronin. They are going down the center. They are taking out these expansions. They realize there's not a whole lot defending, and that means the Southeast team, they have been broken wide open. Their Southwest expansion is at least being built up, but the Southeast team... Really doesn't have a lot to work with. At the same time, Fleas coming on the north side of the map, making life kind of miserable, exposing the iris that was being used, because, of course, an iris is being used. And not a whole lot of Venoms or anything to actually get rid of these Fleas, or Glaives, or really any kind of anti-Flea units. And with that, the iris does go down. That does make it a little bit hard for the Northwest team to attack, but at the same time, the Northwest team is already in a great position to attack. This Lance is not able to really work in this situation. I mean, they, they just got destroyed entirely by Ronin. Great value on their part. Redbacks can't do much either, because skirmishers generally beat riots for range. The only downside, though, is these Ronin are trapped. Mace is able to take them out in the end, and not a whole lot of damage is dealt, unfortunately, which, again, like this expansion, I don't know... Do, Northwest team must not know it exists. Yeah, they don't really have any real knowledge of it. I guess that early tarantula did do the trick, like, when it was around here and was stopping the Sparrow from scouting. That seems to have done the trick in making sure this expansion wasn't known. But then again, you can kind of guess that expansion would be taken, or at least double check, because that is not protected. A Lotus against several Gronin is not going to stop any attack on that base. So at this point, the Southeast team, they have started to really build up. They've taken that Southwest expansion. That early aggression from them has started to pay off. And while the Northwest team is doing what they can to get back in this, they are just throwing units away in the process, desperately trying to raid but again, not raiding in the vulnerable locations. It's more desperately trying to take out the main base. Raiding isn't really what's going on here. It's desperately assaulting. And the thing with desperate assault is that you do lose units quite a lot. Unless you can actually make it a win, you're going to lose units very quickly. And that loss of units is going to put you back. Which is exactly what we're seeing. The Northwest team having a bit of a hard time holding on. The only, the only saving grace is that the Southeast team hasn't gotten a massive energy infrastructure and can't really use their production, can't really use the metal they have as they're reclaiming. But that will soon change. The fusion plant is going to be online now. There is fusion plant online. 
That will allow for this production to actually be useful. But even then, not as much production coming in. This and the Northwest team, they aren't especially well set up for production either, actually. A couple of characters or just to have this constructor do stuff is pretty necessary. But either way, the, the production is relatively even. The only downside, of course, means Crab is in the way. You can't really get rid of it. The Ronin are not able to survive much of anything. The middle of the lake just being dominated by the entire hovercraft force, because of course it is. And even the north side expansion that was being taken earlier is just being... It is being wrecked. It's Mace just tearing it apart. There's not a whole lot stopping it either. Again, the Northwest team is working quite a bit on overdrive, which is nice to have, but it's not doing the trick. Not enough, at least. Like it is, The Southeast team is still ahead when it comes to economy. And again, the Southeast team has been building up. They got more caretakers. They have more fusion reactors coming. They are actually setting up for all the energy and build power they need to use the economy they have. And that's a real turning point. Northwest team don't really have that. On top of the fact that the Northwest team, they have half the... like. They have a deficit of 5,000 metal for unit destruction. So the Northwest team... The only thing they really have at this point left to do is... Oh, well, I guess Thomas is not here. So MV, the only thing they have left to do really is make a last stand. Not a whole lot of obvious ways of getting in here. I suppose they do have bombers that have been built up and... I guess the idea might be use that on the crab or possibly use that on the sea-bound units. Which wouldn't be a bad idea. Ooh, that halberd. That halberd did not have to die. But yeah, with, with all that said, it looks like there isn't really going to be a whole lot in favor of anything on the Northwest team. MV is just gradually being torn apart as the Southeast team gains an increasing metal lead. I gotta say, the whole thing just came down to the fact that the Northwest team... Like, they had the advantage when the Southeast team did not build out, but they kind of lost the advantage when the Ronin just... They were going to the attack, and they didn't continue attacking, even though it was open. They didn't scout out, hey, we've lost, the tarantula's been destroyed. Let's go in and see if there's anything here now that there's no anti-air stopping the Sparrow from coming in and scouting. But that never happened, so the Northwest team never saw that this base was pretty vulnerable, and the Ronin could just walk all over it, at which point it'd be easier to walk into the main base from this ridge, because bots can go up this hill. So the Ronin could have walked up here and just destroyed everything inside of Fisticuff's part of the base. And yeah, they couldn't get through Jasper, but they don't have to. That is not the only bot pathable path. It is the only vehicle pathable path, but bots can go on the other side. However, that is that is hypothetical, and the reality is the Southeast team has taken this game kind of decisively at the end, but with a fairly even start and fairly even throughout. But as you can see, the Southeast team, even as it was in terms of economy, they were winning the attrition battles. And that ultimately wins in the game. So yeah, that was that. We're going to have another match coming up, which is going to be a 1v1. The rest of these are going to be 1v1s. First one is going to be a 1v1 on Adansania between 400 and Etsuri. I've seen 400 in a while, actually. Etsuri I've seen a bit in team matches and such, but I'm curious how they play out in this. So yeah, that'll be up next, so stay tuned.